This is the 2014 game table for the 2014 Bot Ball Challenge, the Assistive Challenge. And we're going to start by showing you the different areas of the game board. So first of all, you can see in the middle, we've got this PVC structure and this piece of tape. Everything on this side would be on this side of this particular game board. It's bounded on the outside by the inside edge of the PVC, the inside edge of the PVC in the middle, and this black tape. We also have on this game board scoring areas, the first of which is the lower storage bin, which is this area here. Notice there's no PVC in front of this piece of tape here. And then right next to it, we have the upper storage bin, which is a little bit larger, and it's completely surrounded by PVC. And then here we have the starting box, you can see surrounded by the inside edge of the PVC on three sides. And then the outer edge is defined by a pencil line. Robots must start within that space with a 15 inch high vertical limit. We'll measure that by using a piece of PVC that's 15 inches tall. So everything must start within that height. Down on the other end, we have the fine motor skill area. And as you can see, it's defined by PVC around it. We define this area by the inside edge of the PVC, in which you have two containers, one yellow and one orange, one bigger than the other. These can be placed prior to the start in any manner the students choose, as long as they are touching the surface of the table and not extending past the vertical projection of the inside edge. So this is legal. This is legal. This is legal. You can even do this if you wish. What you can't do is this. This would be illegal because this extends past the vertical projection of the inside edge. Then we also notice you have the hanger racks in the middle. You've got a lower one which starts with two multiplying hangers on them. For this particular side of the table, the one closest to the starting box has the opening towards the starting box. You can see on the other side it's reversed. We have the lower hanging rack and the upper hanger rack. And then you also notice we have the shelves. We have a medium shelf, I guess I would call it, and an upper shelf. And these have the cubes on them. So that pretty much defines the game areas of the board. Now let's talk about scoring items and how they score. And we'll start with Bot Guy in the middle. Bot Guy, because your side is defined by the inner edge of the tape, when Bot Guy is on the black tape, which is where he starts in the game, he is in no man's land. He does not count for either team. If he comes over to your side, he's going to count points. The trick is, if he's still touching the black line in any part, he does not count as being on a side. This would be on your side. This would be on your side. This would not. So that pretty much defines Bot Guy. He can come out and score on your side. He can also score down here at the fine motor skills area and we know that because he's actually touching the tape. He can also score on top of the cube. He can also score on top of the exercise bench on the tape. Now the interesting thing about Bot Guy is if he's touching the top but also touching the surface of the table he does not score. Now a robot could hold him up if wanted. The robot could hold him in place this would score. Let's say it's over here like this and Bot Guy falls off and he's touching the PVC. In this case he's not touching the surface, he's still touching the top of the cube, this would score. So put Bot Guy back. Let's talk about the palms. You notice the palms are in two areas on the board. It's marked by a circle ring and pencil. The judges will take these and randomly place them in that ring. Okay, the same for both sides. So let's talk about the lower scoring bin. Everything scores in this bin with the exception of bot guy and hangers. Everything else scores points in the lower bin. That's also true for the upper bin. If you're good enough that you can actually raise them up and get them over the edge, you can score more points in the upper bin. Now there's another option. If you can sort by color in either of the two bins, in this case we only have green in the upper bin and we only have blue in the lower bin, this counts as sorted in both bins and you get more points. Not sorted. 
Now there's also another strange rule over the upper bin. At the end of the game, you cannot have any portion of your robot extended over the vertical projection of this box. So if your robot's parked here at the end of the game and there's a wire hanging over, that's going to lose all of the points that are in the box. Now there's another distinction. In this side, they just have to be pushed past this edge of the tape and inside this boundary. Objects must be in the vertical projection of this area to score. For sorting purposes, however, this is not sorted. Okay. So other options to score are simply knocking these cubes down onto your side. The yellow ones score less points than the orange because they start at a lower position. And you'll notice on the shelves we have them numbered. So on the top the orange is numbered 1 through 7 and then the yellow shelf they're numbered 8 through 14. What will happen after you set up your robot and hands off the link controller controlling the game will tell the judges where to place them. We don't know because this is at random. The only thing we do know is they will never be together. There will always be at least one space in between, although there could be more. So you can have lots of different placement options for that. Okay, let's go back to the starting box. Your hangers must start in the starting box. That means they too cannot be taller than the 15 inches. They can't be hanging out on the side, can't be hanging out on this side. You don't have to start with them on the robot. You could start with them in the box, like so, as long as they're inside. I do want to point out that even mounted on a robot, if you keep these at the 15 inch height, so I'm going to show you right here, and you watch what I do when I take this over to the rack. I want you to notice that you can actually get over the bottom rack and still be under the 15 inches in height if you choose to do so. The next question about the hangers, do I have to use the hangers provided by Kipper at the game table? Yes, you do. And if you're going to mount them on your robot, you must be able to do so in the initial 90 second setup time. You can group them together. Um, you can keep them separate. But remember, whatever you use to group them together cannot damage the hangers. And again, you only have 90 seconds to get this done with the hangers on the table when you come up. If you choose to bundle the hangers, remember they will count as one game piece only. For hangers to count, they must be independent. So the hangers then, they're going to score here. They're going to score many more points up here. And then the most points are going to be when you can take one of these multipliers off and hang it on the top. Remember, the multipliers multiply every hanger on there. Even if your opponent has hangers on there, the multiplier multiplies them all. Okay? So now we'll go down to the fine motor skill area. And items that score in here are orange and yellow cubes. So one, you remember, you're going to get points just for getting them on your side. You're also going to get points if you get them down here into the fine motor skills area and you'll know they're down here because they'll be touching the tape. The other options are you can get them inside where they score more points but the best option is if you can get them into their appropriate container. This scores the most points. Now the way we're going to tell if they're in the container is if the cube breaks the volume. That's going to count as a score. So that would be scored. That would not. So in reality, you could get four cubes in even the smaller container simply by doing something like this. And again, we're just looking at the edge of it to make sure that the cubes break the vertical projection so they're in the volume. The other option is this. If you do something like this, the cube that goes in will count in the higher scoring vessel. So in this case, that would count as an orange score. If you put a yellow one in, the yellow one will count in the yellow one because that's a higher scoring item. And again, at the start of the game, you can set these up however you wish so you know where they're located. Remember, the game is two minutes. Have to start with the lights. Have to shut down with five seconds to go. The lights will, will flash. The robots have to power down. We'll know that they're powered down. We'll look at the LEDs on the motors. If a servo's 
disabled and starts to go down, that's perfectly fine. So that's a quick overview of the 2014 game board.